Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am off to a very late start today because I spent most of yesterday picking up this load. What is it? To the naked eye, it just looks like a pile of I-beams or H-beams. But I'll tell ya, here's a clue. Galvanized steel siding. Well, siding goes on buildings, doesn't it? So what we've got here is a building kit that somebody purchased. And as far as I can see, they purchased it from a teardown. And they were going to rebuild it on their property. And it was a elderly couple. And they had it sitting on a trailer. They had it sitting on their trailer for so long, the trailer rotted out underneath it. So... In my husband's lifetime, it had always been there. That's the neat thing about his job. He finds things like that old uh, Oliver Crawler and he's able to get things sometimes for the price of scrap. Well, he did it again. He approached him at just the right time that the lady had been thinking about cleaning up the yard and they're not really doing farm stuff anymore. They took to building a whole new barn and did a uh what do they call it post and beam a pole barn and we really wanted to have steel buildings for strength so our shop shed is pole barn and this old uh, hip roof barn and the extension on it are all made of wood so why not get a barn building that can last forever one thing led to another and i found out you can get closeouts and canceled orders on these building kits so we were kind of you know figuring out well they didn't know how to put it together how are we going to know how to put it together and it's just like a puzzle so these are uh, sections that sit on the beams that are the uprights over here we've got uprights and it looks like it's going to be about a 20 foot by 40 foot wide building folks that is huge. Now, the reason for it, you know, I've been looking for something for my maple syrup operation. Right now, everything just kind of gets done in the kitchen of the house or the garage. And I had been boiling my syrup out on a flat pan outside. We would really like to take things up to the woods. Why bring all that sap up here and have to work on a road? We have a lane. And eventually, it would be really nice to build a house up on that hill or further down into the woods. You see the deer up there right now. So it's just a beautiful sight up there. And it just kind of overlooks the rest of the farm. So we could easily maintain this, drive a truck up to the front part at some point in our lives. Or maybe the boys will build a house back there. Who knows? At one point, the corner over here was divided for a home for a daughter of the original owners. And, well, they sold off the farm. She sold off her house, too. We couldn't put them back together tax-wise. It wasn't going to be feasible because it's split off from the farm now. But it'd be nice to eventually see if that could get put back in as agricultural uh, homestead for a place so the boys don't have to, you know, start all over from scratch. So this is what I've got. And you can see here there's... The roof sections and then we believe that these are um, the side sections and then a header so well one two I think he said there were three of those but I'm not I'm seeing two and there's six of these uprights in another length and then shorter these four here. It's going to be a job. I don't know when it'll ever get done. It's not going to be ready for this year's maple syrup season because this attaches uh, to this attaches to the foundation of whatever it is that you decide to put down. Whether you do, you know, buried uh, concrete uh, rods down into there or if you're, you know, like the you know, like where you fill the sono tubes, uh, the concrete tubes, and put the post anchors that way. But 
we're gonna have to see about all the hardware and everything not a big deal all right, dusty cats is right down there boom 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 so heavy lifting gonna have to have the backhoe running so today is a day of many jobs when he's home lots of things get done and today we are taking the time to unload this eager beaver trailer so that we are not tying that up anymore we've had some cold weather and some snow as you know this is the middle of maple syrup season we were out here earlier today gathering sap and thought the road was good enough that we could get out here with the weight and get this unloaded. This man is out here hand unloading this. I'm pretty much just watching and supervising with the occasional pull and push. This whole flat area here is a peninsula so we're thinking by this old sugar shack this area here might be kind of good for it. But I was kind of thinking about like a 20 by 30 at the maximum for this section where we've got a lot more open space in this peninsula area beyond the sugar shack for building it. So you can see this old thing, it's in rough shape. It's standing, but it needs some roof work if it were to house a sugar shack. But we're up high, all that's down low. So it's a good dry spot for a building. So this is one of those steel building kits. It said USA Steel stamped on it. And the old guy that had it didn't know how to put it back together. So it sat on a trailer so long that the trailer was rotted right out. When we got it unloaded, there wasn't much left. Even these layers of galvanized steel siding the layers that had been on the bottom maybe they were their roof sections you can see that one on top if we're gonna go to the effort we'll go ahead and put nice new siding on it so this is just one of the things we're working on for today and we wanted to show you so off topic of this building kind of on topic with maple syruping I wanted to talk about tree logging there's a particular channel that I've seen a little bit of and we don't want to fund our farm and our hobby by logging these beautiful woods. Now you can see all the hundreds and hundreds of trees behind me. I think our acre uh, acreage of woods is about 40. Um, I'm not real sure on that right now. I do know, but a lot of these maple trees, you can see where the buckets are at, they're real old and some of them have damage to them to the point that we're not tapping them anymore. There's one that I have tapped in right now and I went to go empty the bucket today. It only had about four inches of sap in it from about five days of the sap running. So he's getting turned around to unload the last of the largest beams and I just like to wander around and look at this. So let me show you. So this old maple tree was left here and the previous owners had the sugar shap, so they tapped it. I looked over it, there was tap holes, but it's just dead, it's dried up. This is excellent firewood for the evaporator. Look at all this. So even though it's been down, this tree probably was already dead before we moved here or close to it. But these mature trees would not be here for me to make maple syrup if we went through here logging it. The trees that are coming up, the trees that are not big enough to tap, are not going to be big enough to tap until my children are adults. And if somebody were to come in here, a logging crew, they're going to run all those down. They are going to clear paths to get equipment in here for the larger walnut trees. We've got lots and lots of cherry trees. Um, I think these are wild cherry trees here and you know we want that to continue and go on. There's beautiful birch trees here that are as big around as three men. They're just giant. We've got walnut trees. Uh, there, there's just so much natural beauty in the woods with the creek and the different colors. We had a man stop by this after the lady who owns the farm tells, you know, you don't come back and ask the man. He said, no, we'll just keep my card. Get back with me later. No, I won't. He leaves him his card anyway. 
You can just as easily log your own woods, a few logs at a time. He offered to buy a maple tree in our yard for a couple hundred bucks. It's in our yard. That's landscaping. That's not timbering. If the guy needs to buy one or two logs at a time, business is slow for him. But I just wanted to say, the woods are beautiful. They're here because somebody else didn't timber it. We had looked at another farm before this and it had been all cut up and there was just nothing left. There wasn't a maple tree to tap at all. And I wasn't even into tapping maple trees at the time or making our own syrup, but we knew we wanted a beautiful woods to retreat to. So save your natural beauty. Don't hire somebody else to go in there if you don't have to. They will go through the woods with you and say, you know, cut this one or don't cut that one. But so much of it gets run down that that future growth is going to be beyond your lifetime regrowing. So this is the tree that I was talking about. I went to go empty the sap with a low volume in the bucket. Look at that. That is a hole from a pilated or that is a hole from a pilated woodpecker. If you've never heard of them, look it up. Right when we bought our farm, we had made a trip back to our old house and there were holes from a pilated woodpecker in a pine tree. So earlier today, that hole up there, all the sap was running out of that hole all the way down this tree. Now today, it's been, I don't know, about six hours. There's a hole here that the sap is leaking out of. So looking up at the canopy of this tree, it's going to end up being firewood probably much earlier in its lifetime than these two trees sitting next to it. But it'll make great firewood for heating up that maple sap in the future years. Just like all the other dead trees around here or anything that just breaks off in a storm. We're just going to use it up right here. I wanted to mention there is a video years ago. Trey was just little. And we purchased a sawmill from a farm and we needed a building for that sawmill. So because of the size of this building, I think I mentioned we think it's about 20 by 40 with the layout of it. And... It'd be great for that sawmill. We can cut up our own trees and process our own. I would mentioned to him that the deck or the floor on the Eager Beaver is really bad. It's actually his dad's trailer. We just use it the most. So I said we should probably put a new floor on that for dad. He added a couple of boards where it was broken real bad. But I was talking to him about sweeping it off. If my phone goes off. I'm waiting for a text message. I found a Ford Jubilee and there was one for sale on Craigslist right by me. And I didn't know what he had going on that day. I waited and pulled it up this morning. In 48 hours, the tractor was gone. So I found a different one. It's another drive farther away, but you know, it might be a good idea to take a drive over and see it before that one is sold. So I'm texting the guy now. Thought it'd be a good idea to get this trailer empty and go over and go see about it. This is the double I-beam and sometimes you gotta work smarter, not harder. I don't have snow and mud tires on the Suburban right now. And we were just spinning out like crazy trying to move this. It had sunk in the yard from the snow melting. So we had to pull the Suburban and the Eager Beaver most of the way to the woods with this old 730. Earlier today, the Suburban was pulling the 730 because we actually had to take the starter off of it to get a rebuild for it. If you've ever rebuilt one, we're looking for some parts called sprags. And these uh, 
These guys that rebuild starters, they'll send it out to re get it rebuilt for you, but they don't actually rebuild anything around here. So, it's a AC Delco starter, and I forget the part on it, it's something called a clutch, the starter clutch. So we might just end up having to order a whole new starter clutch for it instead of just the sprags. But the sprags are little teeth that spin out. If you know about that or know where to get them, let me know. I've done all my searches online and I haven't found them. What do you think, boss? What do you think? I'm gonna pull it up. for this year to try to get this building built. We've got the concrete truck so that we can go and get loads of concrete. There's a few concrete plants semi close to us that we might be able to run the truck over to get our own concrete floor poured and get a start on this building when the weather warms up. After maple syrup season, kind of in between the hay, we'll see how it goes. So, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Remember, if you're not subscribed, to hit that little subscription button and the notification bell so that you know when the next video comes out. Bye!